Good news, everyone! Imagine if Hitler hadn't got kicked out of art school. Dude, better place. That, that's what I think. There'd be some happier Jews, probably. Except for the ones that had to pay for his paintings. Are we doing it right now? Yep. All right, cool. Awesome. Hey, everybody. Uh, <laughs> Mid-conversation started. We're trying to do that now. Shows what we talk about. Um, <laughs> but, uh, better. I'm just trying to think, like, what his favorite medium would have been. Like, I'll, I feel like he's a watercolor guy. <laughs> I feel like more of a sculptor. Like, he wanted to sculpt. And full, bring things into form. You want to mold? I, I'm gonna look too much into this and get in a lot of trouble. I, hey, I feel the, like I feel like he took just, like just a slab of white marble and was like, no, it's perfect as is. For the record, for the record, like I have looked online, supposedly like you know you can find like a painting or two of his that he did, and I'm like, better than me. I wouldn't take it. I, I'd probably been a little pissed off. They were like, no, you can't come here and learn art. Don't know if I'd have gone to those links. <laughs> they, they might have done a bit much. <laughs> Just a, a little too much on the old razzle dazzle. I'm pissed no off. one will deny that he wasn't passionate. <laughs> yeah, true. And dude, if that's what drives art. All right, no, we're too far. How was your week? Let's get off that train as quickly as possible. <laughs> you don't get off the train. <laughs> true. They made, they made them get on the train. All right, your week. Your <laughs> your mandatory labor of doing hard hard work. Also, another... aren't you technically a minority at your work? Yeah. Yeah. How many other white folk you work with? Three. <laughs> <laughs> now, how, how many of other varieties? One. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hang on. So it's three whites and one Mexican? Oh, no, no. One variety. <laughs> oh, okay. 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 Right. That, that makes more. No, well, <laughs> how many of that variety? This keeps getting worse. <laughs> I tried pulling out. Just going Carter into the mountain and the Kennedys, did. Anyways. It's on. Didn't one of them crash into a mountain? No, he died in a ski accident, and the other one crashed into a lake. No, but one of them did crash in an airplane, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right. All right. Well, it would be cool if that's what Hatchet was based on, was one of the Kennedys. Do, do you remember that book? Yeah. He ate the gut cherries. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that made him. Dude, Hatchet was hardcore. It, it was terrified like, me of moose. Yes, dude. That. For a middle school, I hated reading. Hated it until I read Hatchet. I'm like, it's a dude surviving in the woods with a hatchet, thus the name. Brilliant. I think my nerdy ass had actually already read Hatchet before we got it. I want to say I got it for like a birthday gift. Probably yeah. from my grandma who taught at the middle school. Yeah, so that's probably how it happened. So I was like, oh, great book. I already know how to write the report on it. Yeah, there you go. I'll just remember this. And I think I probably read something dumb on the other side, like the Hardy Boys. I remember I got to the part where he like goes into the he he like makes a raft. And oh, by the way, when you find all this is find out all this is a true story to like some teenager that got stranded in the Canadian wilderness, you're like, huh, reading's cool now. Uh, but no, I, so like why I'm reading it is the part where he finally builds a raft, goes out to get like an emergency supplies out of the plane. Then he finds the pilot's body that's been decomposed. Yeah. And it's like it clicks and he goes, I've been eating fish. Fish been eating this dude. I've been eating this dude. And I'm like, wait, wait, uh-uh. That's not... Circle guy. You can't eat people on accident. And the book's like, oh, yes, you can, you dumb redneck. Like, ah, <laughs> ah, how horrifying. I thought you had to try to do that. Why didn't he just skip the middlemen, though? Right? Yeah, why not? Like, I'm down here. Just get some just, liver. Yeah, like a drumstick and just... I'm pretty sure it's been pretty far gone at that part. I mean, yeah, but it's cold. It's Alaska. Yeah, it preserves it. Yeah. Was it Alaska or Canada? Well, I it's think Alaska. It was, okay, something like it's all depends on where you crash out there. It, it's all north of the Yankees, which is unthinkable. Uh, but no, so dude, your last week, what more of the same? Yeah, yeah. I've been in this weekend. Finally, got a little bit of freedom to. Well, I wouldn't say freedom. Just went from working on somebody else's farm to working on my farm. To eat something more than beanie weenies and Vienna sausage. Yeah. Yeah, I got fried chicken in the fridge. Good for you. Good. That, that's good. Uh, so what'd you actually... No, what, actually, when I pulled in here, I saw what you were doing. You were staking out, counting your steps while you were walking around. Were you doing it that way, or were you actually, like, using measuring tape? No, I had a measuring tape, but it wasn't long enough. So yeah, I'd, like, I could just, like, roll it out, like, 50-something foot, and then I would just have to mark the mark. And so I was just doing increments of, like, 50 foot around to figure out where... Hopefully, if things go right, where my next big thing of blueberries, about another acre of blueberries to go. It's funny, I've been measuring all last week. I used measurements. None of them were universal. It was all, I, I fixed a mile and a half of fence that borders our neighbors. There's people that use a metric system, and there's people that go to the moon. And then there's people that just count their steps. 
One, two, three, four, five, post here. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. Mm, yeah, short legged bastard, you gotta work a lot harder. Yes. Well, uh, you know, all right, I'm gonna like autistically nerd out about some ranching stuff. The amount of different fences, fence designs, I've come across in my life. I'm just like, man. You're gonna cause some offense to people. Uh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, that would. God bless your autism. That one was good. Um, but, like, dude, you you see some... I mean, so, like, there's traditional... What I consider to be, like, traditional barbed wire fences. Like, somewhere you have an H-brace where it's, like, super reinforced. Then you got every so many steps another post. Whether it's every five steps or six steps or whatever. It's, like, kind of boom, boom right there. It, it could be four wires going across. It could be five. It could be six, depending on what you're doing and where. However... Like in my travels of all my Mexicanese fence building, you come across like ones where it's like five steps post, two steps post, five steps post, two steps post, five steps like, why this? What? It, and it's almost. We've got some of those. And, and it's almost like a part of me is like, is there some like brilliance to this? I'm not understanding. Or were you just, like, lazy? <laughs> and you were like, I'm fixing the fence, but I'm not even going to rip out the old ones. I'm just going to put in this newer one right by it. Yeah, it's sometimes where it's, like, a, where it's kind of like a weak spot. Or we've had some where instead of replacing the that one makes sense. Post, we put two on the other side. It's of like it. there's a gap or so something been, like that. Yeah, yeah but I think it was last summer. Dad had a great idea on, like, one of our pinning lines. Like, you know what? We just need a post in between every post. And so I just had to do that and split the, the middles between all of them. But hey, a pinning lane where it's like, yeah. for those that are unaware, it's like where you take all the cows out of the pasture and you put them in a like hallway of barbed wire. Yeah. For, and you got to make it like really secure because they're going from being wide out and open to all being scrunched together. And they, they'll bust some posts. They'll, you know, if, they, if things go wrong, they have the ability to mess things up. But if everything goes like it's supposed to, it goes like it's supposed to. But you got to reinforce it. Um. That was something <laughs> along our pinning lane, which you've helped us work in, the one right by the cow pins. Uh, some genius or madman, I can't figure it out, along this pinning lane, they're like, it would be a great idea to put a water line right here. So if anyone, like rowing right along it, so if anyone ever has to come here and fix fits in the future, which they surely will have to, their post hill diggers will surely catch this water line. <laughs> It's a poly line. It's not even PVC, so it's just it's easy to fix. But it's, that's me. I've got like I'm getting rid of an electrical yeah. wire, like the barn and everything. And like I'm terrified. Like I'm gonna forget where I put it, and I'm just gonna like short circuit myself like 20 years from now. Very possible. Let it ride. Yeah. Um, but you know, one of the things I was getting at about a fence building, it's such a oh, let my the libertarian heart flutter. It's such like an unregulated thing. It's such a like, how does your crew do this at this part? The, your fence crew, how do they build fences typically? My bear is like, is uh, not so much that, but the H braces. Everyone had like builds the H braces. Does. Some people use like the third post. Some people notch out the post. Some people put it high. Some people put it neat. And when we say an H brace, like just imagine like a post here, another post right beside it, and like a post sideways in between them both to make the shape of an H. And you somehow fasten all those together, and that keeps your fence from leaning one way. If you don't use that, your fence is just going to fall over from the yeah. wire pulling it. But no, like you were saying, like, dude, it's everything from you just use a nail, a couple of nails to hang that middle post. To, I've even seen guys. Somebody's like, like in their apartment right now listening, just going like, I don't care. <laughs> Screw them. But to, yeah, but to those that do, they know what we're talking this about. This is my show. We're, we're talking about shit we do. Uh, but like, dude. But the, the crazy thing is, and I'm, I'm getting to a point with all this about some just abysmal hilarity. Uh, you know, you'll see it everything like that post in the middle, like a tongue up with nails. You'll see people use a power drill and do a hole and a big bolt and washers and stuff like that on it. But then you get to where my favorite like thing, the, the government starts regulating how people do this. Like literally there are if you get into their government programs, not all of them, but a lot of the government programs are like, if you build a fence, it will be, the posts will be exactly this far apart. The wires will be exactly this far apart down to the inch. Uh, when you come to a crossing, you will do exactly at this 45 degree angle with the wire. And then you've got to rotate your cattle off once the grass reaches a certain height. Yeah. Like it's, it's, 
Don't get me wrong. It it works for some people, or but not everyone, because land is insanely variable and different from parcel to parcel. However, they were talking about this. I don't even know if I talked about it on the show or not. But uh, I got a family member who's like involved in, there's like a government, there's a regional government service that like kind of helps out farmers in times of crisis, like droughts or floods or whatever. Get some money from the farmer. Like it seems mostly as much as I discrepant, d- despise government agencies. Like it's one that seems very much like you have to bring the receipts for how much you lost and we will use taxpayer money to help you out. Um, my mom is like, <clears throat> On the like helps out with this, but one of the things they were hearing was like, "Hey, if your fence got destroyed, that's fine. But when you replace it, you like this was after the hurricane, so like a lot of fence got like just yeah. destroyed, and wiped out. <clears throat> to preserve nature, you must find the same hole. Oh, not a chance in hell that 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 fence post broke in, and you must dig out the old fence post, like the half of it that's still in the ground." And put it back exactly how it was. That's a no. How insane is that? Yeah. Like, for those of you that don't understand, like, these fences go through bay heads of swamps and, like... I have, like, stabbed the ground multiple times just to find a hole to maybe squeeze a post between tree roots. Yes. And, like, in the one you might have put there ten years ago, the roots might have conjoined around it, but since it's been broken, like, it's been filled in with stuff. Like, it's it's a... No, and it's funny because all the farmers are on this board. Like they're they're legit ranchers and farmers. When they hear this, they're like, "You imagine us trying to tell our neighbors about this program and like, this is how we have to sell it to them. Like this is bona fide retarded, and it is government. It all it all, it all is. and and hey, there's some private market stuff that's absolutely retarded, but it doesn't take my money unless I give it to them. So far. <laughs> Let's see how these ESG scores go. But, um, so yeah, so what? So just melons and working on your blueberry field and anything else exciting on the past week? I, I really haven't had a whole lot of it. Ex- oh, I remember my dog today. Your dog? Yeah. I haven't seen a dog here. Oh, well, it's, it, was, at stay, it stays at my dad's because yeah. I'm gone and back and forth so much. Which dog? Okay. I'm Chunk. A- my The one we've had forever. Yeah. Oh, rolled her. She's <laughs> fine. She's fine. She's okay. <laughs> she didn't have There's to eat a scary- too. Uh, so there's, there's a scary moment there, but she's okay. What yeah. are you driving? Your truck? Oh, my truck. Yeah, I came pulling in the driveway. She really has this, like, she comes out and run meet, like, we call her greeting committee because she wants to run out and see everybody. What vehicle. color is she? What does she look oh, like? Oh, she's white with a big brown Okay, spot. yes, yeah, I know which yeah, one you're talking about. Anyway, she comes trotting out like she always does, and I go to make, like, the turn like I always do. Real friendly, real personal. And I hear a thump and a, and I, like, look over my dad's, like, in the driveway. I'm like, Dad's, run-. I'm like, Dad's run her over. And he's like, like, He's like, oh yeah, all the way over. And he starts, and he's like, glad I didn't do it. <laughs> Dicky response. Legendary. Bert just right like that. And it's like, I get out and she's like kind of hobbling around. I'm like, are you good? Dude, your dad needs a Twitter. And uh, no. Yeah. No. Yeah. And uh, he has, <laughs> I thought he has an Instagram. But uh, anyways. All right. Uh, that and so she kind of like hobbles over to her bed. I'm like, you get, I was like, yeah, it should be all right. And he's like, he's like, I got, she will live if she won't. So we had to, we had to go to town. We to town, came back and she was. She was fine when we got back, like, just, like, you would have never guessed it happened, came run out again, and I was like, oh, you clearly didn't learn your lesson. Yeah, whatever you Luckily, it was in, like, this, like, a sandy spot, like, so I think between that and just, like, a... Did you hear the thump, or did you feel the thump? It was both. Ooh, ooh, she ate. She <laughs> it was one of those, that I knew what happened as soon as it happened, and I was uh. like, and then I was like, oh, okay, okay. Dude. It's like, walk it off. Walk it off. She's okay though. Yeah, like, no. yeah she seems. Yeah, she seems to be fine. She went good. jump on the range and run around when we got back. So I'm fine. I'm good. Please yeah. don't kill me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Put some pressure on her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, take a walk. <laughs> um, no, but uh, I uh, we had a dog named Ketchum. She was a German Shepherd. And she earned that name. Uh, she she liked chasing and catching stuff. Uh, she would always she would always run alongside a truck like most dumb country dogs, like right beside the tire, and almost like she's kind of guarding but kind of a slightly attacking the tire slightly not like yeah. not like getting a mouthful of it or anything but like, you know trying to catch a foot and uh like I, I unloaded the bed of my mom's blue f-150 and i uh, had unloaded at the bar and i was taking off and i was just like i was I, I was just like uh i'm gonna like speed up a little bit and just go a little faster and outrun her 
and me doing that, I think I ran over like her front shoulders. Mm, yep, yep, she was like 10 years old, and I remember, I can't remember if it was my mom or one of my brothers was like, well, you did it fucking around, time to put her down, and I'm just like, okay, <laughs> okay, I'm 12, but okay. Mm. Yeah, I think I did. I can't, I can't actually remember putting her down, but man, that made me feel bad. Um, speaking of feeling bad, so this, I, I, I don't know, this past week, for me, I fixed a mile and a half of fence. And that was some of the hardest, not not hardest, I take that back. Just some of like my favorite work I've ever done. It was just this fence that's been somewhat okay since the hurricane. Like I patched it up and made it half decent on the northern border of our property. But since then it's fallen apart. So I was like, all right, I got to do it good and tight and straight. And like, it was so flooded whenever I fixed it. I actually had to make a new fence that came up a hill and like around because the water was so high at the yeah. time. Uh, but I was like, all right, the water's down. It's dry. I can actually do this thing. Knocked out a mile and a half. Oh, um, which just made me feel good and listen to what I want to listen to and work at my own pace. But I had something extraordinary happen this weekend. Um, my daughter had her ninth birthday party, and we were very excited for it. Invited a lot of her friends, and uh, just one showed up. Ooh, and that's a that's a tough. That's a especially at nine. She's like, I'm a really aware. Was there of like some legit reasoning behind some of them? Or I know it was like graduation weekend, so I don't know if it's like. I think there was a lot of on. that. I know she handed out like invitations at school, and here's the thing: like I went with this chick, my daughter, to Legoland, and like. We kind of broke off from the main school group to go, like, do our own thing and run around at our own schedule and not be tied to chaperones. <laughs> the nerds. <laughs> we went out and had fun. Uh, but, like, dude, like, whenever we left. So like, you could actually experience Cypress Gardens? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I've always wanted to do this. <laughs> but, uh, no, so we, uh. But, like, when we broke away, like, she had, like, three or four friends who were like, oh, no, like, come on, let's hang out. And I was like, well, hey, come to our birthday party this weekend, and we can all hang. Yeah, I'm only going to give them their, their defense to the fact that they can't drive there. That, exactly. That's, I think it's, like, a good chunk of probably the parents had stuff going on. And I don't know. I think more so than it used to be. I remember when I was a kid growing up going to elementary school. I, especially early elementary school, I, I'm not sure why, and I'm totally cool with it. Like, most of my friends were Puerto Ricans and Mexicans. Miguel Perez, Jose Rivera, Jose Berrigan. Uh, I stayed the night at Jose Berrigan's house. He was the first friend in Arcadia. I actually stayed the night at his house because I was, uh, like, outside of family. And I was in yeah. the second grade. I remember I got scared at, like, 12 o'clock at night. And I remember crying on it. His family owned El Parada. I'm trying to remember whose house I stayed at the first time. But I cried on her lap, and I just remember her, like, holding me against her, like, boobs pretty much. <laughs> nice lady. I remember being second grade, like, this is comforting, and I'm scared, I want my mama. And she's like, she's coming, mijo, she'll be here. In <laughs> but I remember, like, they were great. But some of, like, other friends, like, I went to their house, and I'm like, there's questionable stuff going on here. Like, my phone would drop me off, and it's like, oh, they just have a tons of tires and broken bricks lighting their driveway, and way too many chihuahuas. <laughs> way too many chihuahuas inside the house. And stay the night I've over there. I've never met a nice chihuahua. They've always are little assholes. I've met a couple that were pretty cool. And it's like, why are you so mean? I could I, I could end you. Most of them I'd like to punt. Yeah. Most of them I've met, I'd like to, sp especially over at Miguel's houses. I, I hated those chihuahuas. But, like, he was cool. His family was cool. His dad was, like, Possibly a gang banging Mexican, but I or Puerto Rican, but like I thought he was cool. They all seemed really nice. Uh, just and, and that's what matters. Maybe maybe his dad was just more like traditionally like kids. It's not my job to mess with the kids. Piss off. Like yeah. it seemed very much more. But uh, anyways, I think with this generation, possibly rightfully so, maybe not. There's much more caution and like I'm just gonna let my kid go over to somebody's house in elementary that I don't know the parents. Yeah. Um, I think there's much more hesitation in that than there used to be. But anyway, what were you saying? Where, where was your first stay in the night? I really don't remember. Uh, it's probably either Brian Smith or Tyler Clemens. Of probably between the two. That's who I hung out with a lot when I was younger. So, But I can't, I can't like, remember any... So it must have been, like, uneventful. I can't have, like... I don't have, like, a... Also, we live so far away that I'm pretty sure my parents told me, like, 
We're not coming back. Okay. So I remember staying the night at Jose Rivera's, and he had a PlayStation One, and he had Marvel vs. Capcom, dude. We would, I that and NFL Blitz, and we would stay up till like one. Back like second, third grade, staying up till one or two in the morning. I remember Super nights. Nintendo's. So yeah. I remember Super Nintendo's, but that was like Super my, Mario Kart. That was like my Super Nintendo. I never played that. Yeah, I never got to play Super Mario. I, I played it on Nintendo sixty four. And, and then it went to N64s, and then I was like, was it Rush was the video game? The, the car oh, racing game? Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. You know, racing games, this is something, all right, Nerd Avenue, we're going to turn down that one for a second. Racing games piss me off, because, did you ever did you ever play Midnight Club 2 Dub Edition? I think it's what it came, that came out with. It's a mouthful. It's a mouthful, yeah. It was the Midnight Club series. Most of them were pretty dumb, but I remember like the one cool, all right. The redneck version of it, you might remember this, was 4x4 Off-Road Fury, where you I could... So. I remember there was, like, Cruise in USA, I which remember was like, the one you could play in, like, the Walmart. Both of these were on N64, I think. I remember renting them at Movie Gallery. Dude, it's like, you could... Your truck, it was the same with, like, Midnight Club, but just not as rednecky. Like, you could put, like, different tires on it, and that would affect if you could go off-roads and, and all that. And, like, tear... Like, you, you could... Uh, if you put a bigger engine in it or whatever, like that would weigh you down in the mud more, but you could go uh, across the road yeah. faster. I don't remember that. I remember like the then they Ru quit doing that with racing games. The Rush, you know, the thing with Rush Two is like that massive just freestyle arena where it had like all just the crazy ramps and double oh, decker yeah. level. Like it's all I played Rush at the arcade a lot. Yeah, it was like, it was like Rush Two. We just played. You just, whoever got the, the most scores from all the craziest flips destroying the car. If you like, double tap the gas, your car popped a wheelie. No, that was Cruise in USA. Yeah, that's okay. Then I don't know Rush. No, no, Rush was a different one. It was it was like cr like crazy. Like had all like crazy jumps. And I do not different. remember. I do not remember Rush lately. Outside of building fence and taking care of my kids, uh, I did play God of War. And I tell you, when I was growing up, I played those games way too young. I think they came out on PlayStation One. And God of War, I never got into that. Series. Well, you never had a PlayStation, did you? No, I, I went Nintendo to Dreamcast. Your parents wouldn't have allowed God of War. Oh, probably not. <laughs> it was all Greek mythology. and uh, That was the thing I thought was like, all right, hey, cultural conservatives, this is like a point for video games. God of War, like, really got me super interested in different, like, classical Western civilizations. Like the Greeks, the Romans, the... I learned all that in Gifted. We had to learn all about Greek mythology. They didn't allow me in no gifted class. And then, <laughs> and we had to do like, Remedial math red team. Welcome we had, home, we had boys. Read, like, we had to read like Shakespeare and all those different things. To this day, and I know this is so knuckle-dragging of me, I can I almost look at Shakespeare like I do Bob Marley. That's my like real bright red neck showing you. Like, I can appreciate what you did for the thing you did. I can't stand it. I couldn't either. No. The, I all couldn't the, either. Like, I appreciate the thematic things that, like, Shakespeare did to literature, and I appreciate what he, like, paved the road for afterwards. Like, but here's Romeo and Juliet. I, I get it. It's, yeah. it's two people in love, and their parents don't like each other, and then they end up dying. Yep, get it next. But anyways, God of War. Like, dude, not only was it, like, brutal. Like, I mean, a, I think you start out, the opening scene of the first game, you start out on a ship, and it might be the what's the epic of uh, the Odyssey? Yeah, is that the one where they got? It the might Iliad, be the that. Odyssey and the Iliad. Yeah, it's one. It might be one of those ships. It might just be a fishing ship. But it literally starts off with like it getting attacked by a Hydra and all other video games and movies I've seen up to this point. It's like the point is like, oh, I got to save the ship from the Hydra. God of War is like, I'm gonna use the prisoners as bait to throw at it and let <laughs> them get eaten while I figure out a way to cut its head off. Might kill 30 prisoners to achieve this, but ah, eh, screw them. And the boat captain, too. Actually, legit, I think there's a problem because the Hydra eats the boat captain, but the boat captain has a key on his neck, and the the, the protagonist, Kratos, is like, ah, oh, stupid, I gotta cut open the belly and get the key out. Here's the thing, like, the captain's still alive, and Kratos is like, I don't care, you go back in the belly, I just needed the key. Like, death is meaningless in this whole three- Three game, each game's got to be like, twenty. it's like a 20 to 30 hour story. Yeah, I never played it, but I, I watched the cutscenes just to kind of get, 
And I was just like, I always thought it was like, he's so over the top angry. Yes, yes. <laughs> like his reason was like, I don't care. <laughs> his 1990s incarnate of extreme muscle man, yeah. angry break stuff. Like literally, you break pottery throughout the game for points. Like it couldn't be any more. It also he hold... was the original Chad. I'm, I'm like or Kyle. Yes, <laughs> the original yeah, Kyle. Dude, like it starts off, and I'm like ten years old playing this. Can't well, Google whatever that date that game came out because I remember renting it, playing it. <laughs> One of the mini games. So like there would be cutscenes that would pop up, and you could hit but time buttons at the right moment. You would get bonuses or whatever. There's one where, like, you walked into a room, and there's two horribly pixelated in the early 90s naked women laying in, like, a hot tub. And there's a one square pixel nipple. That, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that, like, like, like square boobs. And they're like, come join us. And he's like, I think I will. And it moves the camera, and you have to hit the buttons at the right time. And the idea is he's giving them orgasms. Why you're doing, if you do it right, you get more points. God of whores. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. And I'm like 10 years old going, this is great. <laughs> you go through the Greek pantheon just slaying like every guy. And the thing is, it came out like after the animated, the great animated cartoon Hercules. I still have not ever watched that one. You suck. <laughs> you really need to watch. That is a classic. Um, But... And it, like, shows the Greek gods of, like, oh, Zeus is just a big dad that likes to laugh and loves his son. Almost everything in Greek mythology can be traced back to Zeus sticking his dick in it. it they, or killing something. Yeah. Or the, them all, like, they're all pretty ethically bad things yeah. that don't care about humans. The, the kind of thesis of God of War, it's almost got angry atheist vibes of, like, well, we just kill all the gods. Yeah. Like, sort of kind of cringe take that is. They do a good job of like, hey, this was like the value of human life back then. Like, pfft, like who cares about slavery? Everything, like, we can kill them if we need to. Like, it's very no caring about ethics. And they come out with like this new one where he's got like a kid. And I'm, I'm just playing through it. And it's like, all right, I'm going to get a little extra nerdy. They had the one a couple of years ago where it's like, all right, this guy's like grown out of the super angry phase and has a kid and is working on being a dad. It's a, and like I said, I like stories of all mediums. It's a cool, making him a little bit of a pussy, but I'm like, I can tolerate this. I'm a dad. I like to take care of my kid, teach them the right things. I want one of them to be rage powerhouses that are trying to kill everything. And I'm playing this one and it's so, it's just so odd how entertainment has changed. Cause like when one of the opening things, they're like, Hey, there's this whale that has chains on it. How sad is that? Let's be like good environmentalists and like break the chains off the whale. Like, hang on, this is the guy that fed humans to a freaking hydra. <laughs> My first thought is maybe the whale's tied up for a reason. Man, what's the? Maybe he deserved it. I can't remember the philosopher, the guy's name, but he's like, maybe if you come across a fence in a field, you should recognize there might be a reason for this yeah. fence. Uh, G.K. Chesterton? Yes, I remembered that. Go go me. I don't know if the initials are right, but he was a, he was a neat guy from the early 1900s. Anyways, they, the overall gist is, I always hated the term pussification of America, but man, some of these real badasses we had are just turning into... I'm, I'm hoping by the end of the game, he either kills his own son or something, because it's... Uh, I've seen all the cutscenes. I don't want to ruin it. Don't ruin it, boy. But... That, that. Yeah. But no, he does He does very well, like, I'm being better than I used to be. Well, I got a question. Like, you've ended it. You ain't gonna spoil it. Is it a good story? I think so. Okay. I mean, I kind of have the same vibes as you. I, I kind of want to punch a trace in the face. Yeah. But, it's and I don't even, I didn't play the game or care about it, but it was like when it first came out, all, like, the streamers or these podcasters, mm -hmm. haha, were, Bunch uh, of fags. yeah, were, like, just using it or, like, you know, where they just put themselves in the little bottom corner yeah. so they could steal views. So, yeah. like, it did nothing but just pop up my feed. So, I watched most of it that way. But, yeah, I had the same vibes. Like, what the? And, uh, and of course, like, Norse mythology. And don't get me wrong. Not all Norse people were, like, bloodthirsty savages. But there were a lot. Yeah. <laughs> like, there was, like, a whole... And, like, I'm not even knocking them as people. Kind of, that's the reality that it was back then. That... Yeah. You know, I, there was something, I don't think it was the show Vikings. There was another show, maybe it was, maybe it was a guy talking about the show, but I was watching it with my brother, Chris, and it was something that really irritated about him. He's like, dude, like they're making all these like battle plans of like how this one 
Viking group is going to invade this other one. And in the middle of it, like, their priest just goes, oh, a raven flew to the west. Screw everything y'all are talking about. We're changing battle tactics and following this raven. And he's like, that's, that's, I'm like, no, that's, that's what it was like. Yeah. like that's, you're rolling roll, dice. Roll the bones and see which way. <laughs> like, and it's just, and if you go like, hey, maybe we should use logic or the, kill him. Yeah, <laughs> kill, yeah. He doesn't, kill him. What was the, uh, the, the pagan guy that was like, when Christianity was coming to, to like kind of taking out all the Norse stuff, like the last holdout of this Nordic mythology. I think when the Christian Saxons, might have been Saxons, I don't know, I'm not exact on Euro Europeans, y'all know this. Uh, like, uh, when they cornered him, they tied him to a post and just poured snakes in his mouth. So when... Oh, I think I've read... The, I, I, yeah, this sounds familiar. And by the way, when you grow up hearing that St. what Saint Patty got yeah. the snakes out of Ireland, <laughs> the snakes aren't literal snakes. Yeah, they're, they're pagans. They're druid. They're druid priests. <laughs> they're people that have just been there, going like, "We just kind of believe what our parents told me." Burn in hell, bitches. Yeah. <laughs> Wild. So in short, video games. Yeah, I had, I had to get off that wagon while we could. But uh, I, I was. I feel like just everything though is being so. You can't just be angry macho anymore. In like Game of Thrones, I'll give Game of Thrones this when it started out. And they gave him a hipster beard. Oh, great. Yeah, 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 they did. I will say this. All right, with all, like... I, He's, I don't, like, so close to ordering a chai latte. I don't know how technically racist this is of me, but I don't care. It's something that, like, blows my mind. When I saw the voice actor... When, it, when you start the sentence It's that racist. Way, yeah. I know it is. But fuck it. All right, I'll be racist for five seconds. When I found out the voice actor of Kratos was this huge, jacked black guy with dreads, like, halfway down his back that looked like a human lion, I'm like... I like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just something... It, Weirdly, it fits perfectly cool. <laughs> it's actually not racist. If anything, I'm disappointed. No, I'm, I'm like, you, I, you're pulling off this, like, Greek Spartan thing really, really good. Kudos. Yeah. Um. Then they do the thing with Velma, and I'm like, uh, not, what? No. I digress. I oh, the new Scooby-Doo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I digress. Scooby-Doo. The idea, as much as I am against race swapping and culture swapping and all that... The idea of a cholo Mexican blade, I have not been able to get it. Blade the Vampire Hunter, that's it, Wesley Snipes. It's, it's just, it's machete, but he's, he hunts vampires. It's, it, but it's even more stereotypical than machete. A. Holmes. <laughs> like, I, re I really want, like, a South L.A. blade. Like, it's switch, like you said, it's switchblade. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I really, I wish I could draw. That would be my comic. Just for the novelty of it. I really, man, redneck blade sucks. I would be the first to say that. That's just a... That's an edgy carnage. That's just a, yeah, yeah <laughs> like, you know, with like a lead pipe. Yeah, that is the guy at the... At no, the, it's Sling Blade. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. That's the guy at the, mm -hmm. at the fair that sells the knives collection. That's got the methed out tattoo. Everyone's always trying to ice skate uphill, everybody. No, it don't, it don't work. I'm picturing like Joe Dierte. <laughs> That'd be a compliment. But uh, no, so... What were we on? Daughter's horrible birthday party. Yeah, only a couple kids showed up, like you said. I think a lot of it was, like, parental reasons. And either one, I don't know, they don't know this kid's parent that their kid is talking about. Uh, less trust and go out. Probably graduation, stuff like that. But I got to thinking, I got to talking to my precious little girl about it. She did have one friend come out, fun friend. Uh, they had a water slide, and they, they went crazy as could be about it. But... As I was talking to her about it, I was like, how can I, like, make her feel better and have, like, a pissing contest with my daughter over who's had the worst birthdays? You go egg all of their houses. <laughs> yeah. Let's find all the kids that turned down your invitations. Yeah. I'll, I'll rough them up. Uh, but, no, we, uh, I was thinking about it. I was like, dude, for a day, I think birthdays have always been important across every culture. But Mine's it, next week, and I'm not looking forward to it. I kind of forgot about that, but happy early birthday. Yeah, <laughs> Thank no. God for Facebook, or else I wouldn't know, like, anybody's birthday. I even see him, and I, I don't want to be that person who also chimes in and then, like, acknowledge it. I'm just like, I don't care. I haven't posted on your thing since a year ago when I, when I wished you a happy birthday, and I haven't liked any of your stuff. Yeah. Anyway, petty shit. But, dude, I had two bad birthdays. For the most part, by the way. My birthdays that weren't bad were, like, mostly awesome. My birthday's July 3rd, right before the 4th. 
bunch of fireworks, badass celebration. The one thing that kind of sucked about my birthdays was that a ton of extended family would be there, which is like, okay. But then, like, they'd invite all their friends. I didn't always like all their friends. But there's one time in particular, I think I was, like, eight years old, and there was one of, he was one of my brother's friends, and kind of like all their friends, named Chase. Uh, and we were, I got a big, huge super soaker when we were out at Lake June. You remember those classic super soakers? Get them two or three pumps and hit five yeah. people. Good, a good one. And I remember, like, I was going to play with it, and he was, like, a bigger kid. I said, I might have been like 10 years old. And he was like, hey, let me see it. Like, we're having a Nerf war. I, I'm going to use that. I'm like, eh, um, excuse me, sir. I believe you're confused. That's my birthday gift I did. Yeah. I will be the first one to play with that. Thank you. Because I remember him being like, going like, man, don't be a prick. Or don't, don't probably like, don't be a butthead. Like, he's four years older than me. Like, give it to me. I'm going to use it. I remember like really thinking like, am I in the wrong for wanting to use my birthday present before? And like, we're kind of like arguing over it and then i remember him just finally going like fine you can have it and as i'm pulling it he shoved it and that thing just went boom and like the the plastic smashed around my face like cracked or something like that and then i just remember like crying and running inside <laughs> i don't want to play anymore <laughs> everything's ruined but no there was that one but by far the worst god bless my 90s parents that had the best of intentions Growing up in a southern small town, as you know, even if you weren't good at sports. Oh, fun fact. I, oh, go ahead. I can't please. remember what year it was, but Finding Nemo came out on my birthday when I was like 12 or 13. So that was like, I thought it really cool. That was a highlight? I, I don't want to say it was a highlight, but I... Did you see it in theaters? Yeah. Who'd you I know think I, I was saying like, like Jamie. Like, I think it was okay, cool. But no, I want to say I went to Adventure Island that day and then came back and then went and saw Finding Nemo in theaters. So... That's a good and birthday. The, the day it came out. So I, yeah. That was a pretty, you know what? Finding Nemo, great movie. Yeah. Right? Like, that was weird. I want my youngest sister and the Barracuda scene at the beginning terrified her. Oh, yeah. that That's a hard, that's a hardcore way to start a movie. Yeah. That's some balls. Yeah. Hey, we're starting it off with the whole family dying, except for two. Suck it, Mulan. Yeah. <laughs> also, never seen that one all the way through. Oh, Mulan's good. I, I legit. Uh, before I had a daughter, I kind of always secretly had a soft spot for Mulan. Like, boys aren't supposed to like this movie. I kind of like this movie. They kick ass. Well, Eddie Murphy's the dragon. Eddie Murphy's the awesome guy. <laughs> uh, and he's great in it. And the whole thing is he's supposed to be a big Mo bat. Mushu? Mushu. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know, like, clips. And it's like, I've seen enough to know what happens in the movie and, and the video, music video. But I've never actually sat down and watched it. I remember it blew my mind, like, cause like I, I think when it came out, I don't know, it probably came out like 98, I was probably eight years old or something. I remember thinking, it's like, how do these dudes not know that's a chick? But, I mean, now look at today's age. <laughs> <laughs> Voila. <laughs> China was more advanced than we thought. <laughs> Feudal my ass. Um, but they, uh, they all kind of look the same. <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> I mean, like, if there's, all right, let's be severely like more so racist. Similar, I don't know how they hate each other so much. <laughs> yeah. Don't know. Don't tell them that. Oh Lord, <laughs> they've got a steak tell on what region you're in. <laughs> no. So, anyways, <laughs> they uh, the the thing that blew my mind. I'm like, this is before guns, but they're like using kind of like prototype cannons to shoot fireworks in war. I remember that part like yeah. blowing my mind and going like, that's cool. And I got all of those things. Kind of got me interested in history as a kid. Um. Finding Nemo. Yeah, that was a great one. Uh, so, all right, what was your worst birthday? I don't... I can't really, like, remember one that was, like, terrible. Um, no disappointments for you in life. No, there, oh, it's not... But, but, like, but it a, must be nice, No, but a, but a birthday doesn't really stick out. Never got carried? Anybody? Never dumped pig blood all over you? No, nothing like... Like I said, it didn't work that my birthday was Memorial Day weekend, so there was either stuff going on or... But no, I can't really... You know, I can't... You know... The, the worst one, God bless my 90s parents. Um, so growing up in the South in the small town, as you and I were equally well aware of, uh, in most families, it's not that you have to participate in sports. 
it's like there's no other way of life except for you as a young man participating in sports. Like, not there's nothing else to do, there, and there's nothing else that's. And enough. if you're not in the sports, your friends are, and then there's nothing to yeah, and do. You're working, yeah, like, that's it. You're either working with your mom or dad, or you're doing sports. And I was not good. Uh, yeah. I I was a late bloomer, and I I was a bench sitter. Uh, Oh, like my parents put me in baseball. And I football. enjoyed all my sports except for the one year I was in the one DCYA football team. God bless you. You were dedicated, even though, like, I remember you passionately keeping the scorebook. Oh, that was a high school. <laughs> I, I, remember, uh, I remember you, like, this is my job, and if I do this good enough, I will be a star player. And I was yeah. like, God bless you. My will got broken a long oh, time well, yeah, ago. No, my OCD, I was like, <laughs> put me on this thing. Oh, it's like, oh. This is some kind of therapy to me. Yeah, like, it's like, oh, checking the boxes, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Color in the square perfectly of first place. Oh, yeah, had a pocket protector for the pants. Like, you can't, yeah, nailed it. <laughs> but, no, I remember, like, it was in You uh, would have, hey, I'll just, I got to egg on this for a little bit. God bless you. I respect it now looking back. I would hate it when I'd go, like, do you something, would, and somebody had to, like, fill in, and they would get it messy. Oh. <laughs> you would crisply, like, you would have your... They weren't Oakleys, but they would be in the shape of Oak. Maybe they were Oakleys. Oakley looking sunglasses. Your hat looking right. Your your. I remember even like your. Oh, no. it looked like you were much more uniform than me. Like having my uniform half tucked out, yeah. half unbuttoned. Like I'm just here to party, people. Yeah. No, it was it had to be crisp. <laughs> yes, but uh, no. So like my parents, God bless them. My thing was even though my dad was the coach. And ah, uh, we would be the team, and I felt bad for uh, like the good players, cause like even when we would win, my dad. I'm gonna have to go back and look because I'm pretty sure like from the Cardinals we got plaques with the pictures. Yeah, there's pictures somewhere of us. Well, we, we might post that. Yeah, I'm gonna have days. to find that. That's somewhere in my dad's house. I can't remember who pointed it out, but there. Because he's even in a shirt where he like assistant assistant yelled at us. And I, my my dad never said this, but it's almost like. Yeah, he was the coach all through, like, minor league. He coached my brothers, and he coached me. My dad was, like, great at baseball, at knowing knowing baseball and being an avid fan. I just remember him having us run the bases, and he'd, like, tell us to go. And if you caught the person in front of you, you could stop running, but the other person had to run more. I had to, I was stuck on that for a while. <laughs> and my dad never said this, but it was always the feeling I got. It's like, son, do you want to play, or do you want the team to win? <laughs> I'm just like... I, I think I want to play. And How he, dare you be selfish? <laughs> I think I want to play. Well, that's just too bad. <laughs> and God bless. I would looking back, I would not have it any other way. I'd rather be made to sit the bench and have to earn a spot than just like you're my son and you can play and get like razzed by the rest of the team. My dad would be like, "We all know you suck." <laughs> We're not going to acknowledge it. You're the exact opposite it. of the coach's kid. <laughs> like, yeah. You're going to sit there and take it. I'm going to sit here and take it. Yeah, I'll, I'll grab the bats. <laughs> but um, it, it, they, uh, God bless them. They probably spent a lot of money for it. They sent me to a football camp when I was like 14. No, no, it was, well, I enjoyed football. I had Monty McLeod. He was my DCA coach. And like all the way up in, like, even when we got to middle school, it was finally I got to middle school because I was like a late bloomer. I was little. Dude, Marty McLeod was a legend in yeah. this town. So anyways, I remember I got to middle school, he wanted me to play, and he's like, he's like, he's like, he was like, I would have, well, I was going to have you be quarterback, but I showed up and everybody's like twice my size. <laughs> Giants. Yeah, Giants. and then like, well, so I played like one school middle school, and we, I was going to play in high school, and he was the JV coach. He finally was that talk. when it was becoming the middle school football yeah. team? I've... And he had like, have a, I mean, he had like a, a talk with me, and he's like, you've got the heart. He's like, but. You ain't got the body, boy. He's like, you're just going to get murdered. Like, these kids are, like, because I was little. Like, I think I grew, like, four or five inches after I graduated. We went to school with Giants. Yeah. Like, so, I don't know. We went to school with people like Cecil Rawls. Yeah. Troy (laughs) Kelly. (laughs) Colin Kelly and Troy Kelly. Troy Some of the, like, huge. Some of the nicest guys. Oh, dude. Huge. Troy Kelly, I remember, because, like, I went and started in the game at all. But, like, practice was my game. That, yeah. was, that was my... Literally, the team got in trouble one time because I outran them in suicides. I hated that damn coach. I hated him so bad. I'm like, I don't even get an attaboy for outrunning everybody. They suck because I did... All right, cool system. Yeah. Cool system. But God bless my folks. They were like, you're starting to get in high school football. You need to get... But, and, like, I was long and lanky. 
I can never put on the mask. I watched you on it. Oh, dude. <laughs> oh, dude. Okay, hang on. When I, I, wasn't that, I think that was my senior, my junior year, I finally got into play. And like, guys, I sucked. I just had no weight. But the one thing, I, I did like football. Because the one thing I liked about it is I might not be fast. And I might not be strong. But I'm tall and lanky. And I got a long torso. Yeah. I got a long spine. And I'm paying for it now. But when you lower your head and bend that spine, it don't matter how big you are. As long as you just... Get enough momentum and, and you don't enough. Yeah. and you don't flinch, you can knock the shit out of somebody. And I'm like, that's my specialty. Yeah. <laughs> and I that do didn't it. sound right when you did that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 it's supposed to be more of a thud, and that was just like Chris knocking on a two by four. Yeah. <laughs> it's a trick. Your your mouth is hollow. It freaks me out when I was younger. Yeah. That's what I used to explain it. But anyways. No, I think I was good. And Troy Kelly, who was like our all-star linebacker, when we would do the suicide drills where you'd have to like get up and run at each other, that was my favorite. Because I'm like, I don't have to be fast. I don't have to be strong. I just got to hit you harder than yeah. you hit me. And God bless these starters who were already grown men at like 16 or like, we got to deal with Mills. I just want to rest up the game. Yeah! <laughs> I'm animated. Sorry. All right. So what the hell were we? Yep. Technical difficulties. We're back, everybody. I got Drop the microphone fell out of the mic stand. I got all handsy and slapped this very wobbly table. Maybe. I don't know. I didn't have it in good. I get it. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the slot now. <laughs> <laughs> I did one. Um, But so what the hell were we talking about? Oh, yeah. The kickoff. Yeah. One of the most brutal decapitations in human history, actually. I know you that, heard, that would have been in a highlight reel somewhere. I know y'all heard of the Aztecs. And like the French guillotines and stuff that holds no candle to this kickoff. Um, so it was towards the end of my senior year and the coach, God, I hated my high school football coach. Cause in real, how, how I led to believe it went down. My brother, Chris is four years older than me. And this coach came on the scene, my brother's senior year. So I was like, when this coach started, I was in eighth grade, not in high school yet. My brother was a senior. And how my brother and my, I think my dad would agree, is the coach was working on his next varsity team, <clears throat> so he didn't really care about the seniors a whole lot, because they're about to be out of there. And what? And my brother, who was like an all-star football player, like an all-state all-star football player, got benched like half of his senior year. And on the way out the door, he let the coach know what he thought about him. No. But one can only imagine the Mills no, saying, saying, saying something to a public official and authority. Um, however, my brother then leaves, and I step into high school. And it's like, oh, now I got this coach over me for four years who didn't much <clears throat> care for us. I understand not, hang on, sorry. <coughs> I ate a cookie, a delicious Biscoff cookie, before we started back in. So looking room. for sponsors. We have an English cookie making company would want to sponsor us sure let her up i mean are they english i don't know i, don't know. I just assumed that anyways well, wouldn't it be called oh yeah it is because they call it a biscuit yeah 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 there you go oh they call fries chips they're odd people yeah i'm glad we're no longer associated with and them. they call chips crisp odd people anyways wankers by the time I make it to my senior year and, like, they're doing the obligatory, like, we've either lost this game or we've won this game, so the last quarter we'll put you in. Uh, when I finally got put in. By the way, this sounds like a whole lot of poor little old me shit. Looking back, I get no shit that I was good or bad at baseball. But actually, I prefer being bad at those things in the lessons I learned through it. Like, my, Yeah, imagine thinking, like, you were the greatest in high school. That was oh, it. Like, the Uncle Rico syndrome. If that's the height of your life is high school... That sucks. <laughs> what up? So for me, it's just gotten better since then. There have been some shitty times, but it's gotten better overall. But anyways, I get put in on kickoff. And it's like a small town. This was before the small town football game started to die. Like hardly anybody shows up to them anymore. For I haven't been. No. But this was like back, the whole town would show up. Oh, you said and the cheeseburgers are still good though, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're still great. Concession yeah. stand food was out of this world. Like, yeah. I was, oh, cooked. man. Our, we had such good burgers. But the crowd oh, is packed. As I'm getting onto the field, and I think it was like even a little cool for Florida at the time. There, there's like so many details of this night I remember. I can remember hearing my friends, my comrades, 
in the stands, I can distinctly hear their like voices. And like usual, I can hear my small town Southern mother whose voice is elevated amongst everybody else. Who is, oh, my mother is like, like if you watch them old 90s movies of like... The random screaming in the... No, like not even that. Like the, the 90s movies that remind me of my mother. God bless her, by the way. She's very passionate, but it's like the dad, the small town dad, who's like, boy, you're going to be the le best football legend I've ever seen in my life. And the guy's like, I don't know, I want to do something else. Now, hell no, queer, you're going to get in there and put your, like, whatever. That. I don't want your life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was my mother. My dad, my dad, my dad was like, you might suck at this. And if you want to quit, I'm not blaming you. <laughs> Just do it at the end of a season. Uh, but my mom was like, hey, you got to do this. Anyways, I can hear her. And I go away from the stands towards the visitor side for the kickoff. When we're going to kick the ball off to the other team. They're going to get it. It's our job to stop them. Now, I am so pumped with adrenaline. When the kickoff goes, I am like, I'm out running. And I was not the fastest kid by any means. I'm out running everybody. I'm weaving in between like blockers and linemen and stuff like that. They're supposed to stop our advance. And I'm seeing like some of my guys kind of behind me getting slowed up a little bit, but I see the guy with the ball. And I made it down like the 20 yard line, maybe, maybe like 25 or 30 yard line, something like that. And I'm hearing, I'm hearing my name over the crowd. I'm actually, go oh, Josh. I'm actually hearing them like, this is the greatest thing I've ever felt in my life. And I could see the guy with the ball. And I'm about five to 10 yards away. I'm closing in. I already, he doesn't even, he's not even aware of me. I know how I'm going to tackle him. I've got it lined up. And then the brightest flash of light comes across my eyes and I hear thunder out of the left side of my helmet and I go what is that and like as my mind recalibrates to what's going on and my eyes open I can see my feet pointing up like I see stars in my feet and I'm flying through the air and I'm landing on my head and collectively I hear like a 300 crowd audience go Oh, <laughs> a lineman has come out of nowhere that I never once saw and has, do you remember me getting hit? Murdered. Murdered. It, my, it was, it was murder. My ass went higher than my head. Like, you remember like you got the cheat code or like the, you got the turt, like the fire on it <laughs> where you could just like ragdoll. Like, That's what I was. Like, it, like you said, it would have been a highlight reel yeah. of, and I think we were playing, oh, right, what, get him some milk. What was the huge 99% black team from? Was it Booker? Brooker? Booker. 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 Big boys. Just <laughs> huge Goliaths. <laughs> they they made me flip backwards. Yeah, because I think Booker was bad at baseball. Yes, but at football, <laughs> they were. Good God. They were monsters. Um, but yeah, they laid me out. That was, that signaled the end of my football career. I was like, I think I'm, I think I'm done. Then I got kicked out of the house for two weeks. That's a whole nother road. We ain't got to go down that I'm, I'm certain has implications. But in, all right. So before the end of that football career, like I said, God bless my parents wanting to build my self-esteem and turn me into a, a good proper man. They sent me to football camp one year. I mean, they did it on my birthday. And it was like a camp in Tampa. Uh, or no, I think it was actually like they rented out the old USF campus. Was it the USF Lions? They were the Bulls. Which one was the Lions? I don't think we had any Lions. It might be a college that's not even there anymore. Okay, yeah. Right. Or like, it's a, like a lower tier or something. Like a state college of Florida or something. Yeah, I don't like remember a, a Lion. Anyways. But now, well, now that you say uh, that. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting an image in your head, ain't I? It was, was like that, a golden green outlined. Yeah, line. what? Was it Weber? That might be Weber. Weber's green. Anyways, God bless my parents. They sent me to a week long camp, uh, being taught by old, up like ex NFL players who get probably paid a good amount of money to show up and teach. You did a weekend one of those for baseball. My brother Chris, he did. Like I said, he was good and he was linebacker. He went to, who was the quarterback for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers that was really good when we were in high school? Car Johnson? Maybe. I can't remember his name. My brother Chris intercepted a pass from him. Nice. Yeah. He was like, he's a pro. He was an all-star NFL quarterback, like hitting 
lineman drills or something like that while my brother Chris was being a lineman he, or a linebacker and uh, ran across and intercepted one and ran. And I was like, good for you. That was not my experience at football camp. Not by any stretch of the imagination. I got to stay in a dorm, a college dorm, that had a shit bed with no, with like my blanket that I brought. I We went to one of those for a, a Bible camp called, it was like a Bible sports camp weekend somewhere. I, like me, Athletic me and, Christian Association or something? Something like that. But me and, yeah, me and Nugent shared a dorm room. Oh, good for y'all. You went with a friend. And I remember he had like so many snacks. Like it was unreal, like the amount of like. Oh, of course, Nugent. Oh, shit. <laughs> Sl- I, uh, let me guess. Slim Jims, Cheez-Its. Uh, and Oreos. Yeah. I and remember a, sh- a shitload of Oreos. Everything to match the redheaded yeah. thing. But, um, no, dude. When I went, it was for a week. And my birthday was in the middle of it. And I played defensive end. Tall, lanky, that's where you put a guy that ain't very fast or whatever. I, I was defensive end. And, you know, at the time we were playing, like, local. I remember we were playing, like, local football. Like, DCYAA is what we called it. But it was, like, your local county's youth association. And so, <laughs> since they'd started the middle school team and all the good players had left to that, like, the official one, I was like, oh, I'm good now. Now that all the, the best football players have left and gone to the official middle school team, I'm, like, good with this. I am a pig among guinea pigs. I was. <laughs> I could hold my own. Now, I went to this football camp, and lo and behold, the only other person in my age bracket, and I'm like, let me think. I had to have been, like, 13 or 14. Dude, I was probably, like, 115 pounds, soaking wet, tall and lanky. Big head, skinny body, had a retainer, <laughs> and my mouth guard would get caught in it. <laughs> really sucked. And the only other guy in my category for defensive end, I'll never forget this human being's name. I don't even remember his first name, but the name on the back. So you technically of- forgot his first name. No, no, no. Never cared to learn it. Because <laughs> the name on the back of his jersey was Cito. C-E-T-O. It would not surprise me if this son of a bitch is in the NFL. Because he is like, I'm like 13, and I'm at the bottom of the age bracket, and he's like 16 at the top of it, but he is a grown man with a beard and shoulders, and like six foot five, or just something like... Me 12. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and I'm just like, and they're like, you're going to do drills with the people in your group, and I'm like, this, this is the only guy in my group. I remember him going... I'll try to take it easy on you. I'm like, oh my God, you sound <laughs> scary. You sound horrifying. Stay down. <laughs> I'd hang out with the linemen after the drills. Because let's all admit, the linemen were kind of like the lower tier losers of the football bracket. I I got to hang out with those guys. They were above me, but I, I could stick in that group. Dude, in the Florida sun, it would be over 100 degrees. I'd be in football pads. And my job for five days a week, for these five days of this football camp, was to get the shit beaten out me by this giant. But did it make you a better person? It made me tougher. Like, <laughs> beyond a shadow of a doubt, it made me tougher. Um, but I remember on the 4th of July, because it went over the week of my birthday, they were like, all right, for the 4th of July, y'all are going to y'all's room, and y'all are going to sleep. And I'm like, can I stay up and watch, like, fireworks for, for my birthday? I remember it was a black coach. He's like, hell no, nah, go to sleep. <laughs> I went into my room on my oh, through the blinds. I could see the flash of fireworks from the college. You're, like, you're just basically in a prison. <laughs> I watched it, dude. I fucking cried that whole night, and other people could hear me cry. I don't give a shit. I was like, ah! worst birthday ever. Do my parents not love me? All I've done is drink yellow Gatorade, puke from heat exhaustion, and get the shit beaten out of me by a giant. Oh, I can just picture the other kids like hearing this, like whimpering. <laughs> just like, picture like butters from some. Do you know what? And then I had a I had a Cuban roommate from Miami who we, he was a lot cooler than I was. We didn't hang out. He was running back, and he would leave my our room and go somewhere else. I remember him just. I remember me starting to cry. He goes, "I'm gonna leave now." <laughs> and just walk out. Then when my mom picked me up from that, I was like, hey, I'm, "To this day." possible future parents listening to this i'm happy i went through that it taught me the biggest bastard named Cito can beat the shit out of me for five days in a row and i'll be okay so yeah between that and my brothers and growing up on a ranch i have a kind of an iron jaw i homer simpson the shit out of a problem just 
batter, battering ram your way through it. They'll get tired of punching my face eventually. They'll run out of wind. Then it's my moment to strike. No, it's a good way to look at life. Anyways, so yeah, that was I was uh, to my future, to my daughter in the future. If you have bad birthdays, you could have a super soaker smashed across your face or left at birth at, at football camp. Um, on the other hand, it's odd as an adult. By far, my best birthdays. Sorry to get all like gay and sentimental on everybody. No, like my best birthdays. It's just me hanging out with both of my kids. Just sitting around, like, do, like I might have a beer or two just because it's my birthday. And then that's it. I'm good. I don't need to, don't care if I see anybody. I can hang out with them. Kick their ass at Mortal Kombat. Go out riding in the woods. Go find a creek or a river or a lake somewhere and just get out some therapy by choke slamming my, my nine years old. My nine year olds. That's fun. That, by the way, best part of kids. You legally have someone you can just kind of do power power bombs and WWE moves too. So we're getting we're treading very closely to like I don't beat them. They <laughs> consent to it and everything. We're cool. But it's fine. Just like grab them like you want to choke Sam Lily? Uh-huh. Alright. Ah, bam. That's that's just fun. No comment. Water! It's in water! It's not <laughs> See you you didn't lead off with that. But this, you're just like, oh I just go out and choke slam my kids. I mean it's like <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking about it. It's funny how many situations... Do you remember that old... you remember that old, like, uh... I don't know if you've ever been to a Ripley's Museum. Like, Ripley's, believe it or not. No, but I've been, like, by them where they're, like, upside down. Yeah, they're or... crooked and stuff. Like, they they have one of these in every one of those. But have you ever seen, like, those wooden carvings where it's, like, one piece of wood that they've, like, carved? And if you look at it from 359 yeah. angles, degrees of angles, it looks crazy and makes no sense. But if you look at it, just like the perfect angle, it looks like a dragon, like killing a wolf yeah. or some shit. I was thinking about it, like, I think so much human experience is just not, you can be retarded and still turn that to this right certain angle and go, oh, there's like a shape here. But you could be the smartest person in the world and just not looking at that from the right angle. It looks like chaos and madness to you. Parenting. <laughs> He's really searching his soul right now. No, okay, maybe that's not connecting. All right, anyways, guys, that's the show. I think it's been an hour. We're out of here. See y'all next week. By the way, hang on. Follow us on Twitter, like, subscribe, all that jazz, especially if y'all made it this far. And uh, next week, I'm calling it out. We're going to do something very different. And we're going to try something new. Change the scenery. Maybe get outside of the bunker. Show you what the real world looks like. Possibly even touch grass. The outside's scary. Absolutely. Let's embrace it. See y'all next week. See you, screws. Bleh. I mean, yeah, I'm probably going to leave that. I, yeah, mouth flubber. Bye, everybody.